Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 2016 Ford Edge SEL, and I believe this has got to have it blue metallic. We have the 3.5 liter V6 with front wheel drive. Let's go ahead and check out the interior. This one has the beige interior with the black accents. One thing I do love about the edge is that the color matches the this piece right here, the accent. So with the SEL package, it does have the Sync 3 touchscreen here, has heated seats. We have the updated instrument cluster over there. You do get two LCD screens over there that are adjustable via these two control panels in here. And keep in mind, this platform is based off of the Ford Fusion, so a lot of the interior pieces are shared and is a little bit taller than a Ford Fusion. The interior is pretty uh, roomy. Seats five passengers. In the Chinese market, they do have an option for seven seats. <clears throat> so, what do you think, Chris? What do you think of the interior? It's a decent interior. Yeah. Very straightforward, nothing too fancy, nothing too like cheap. It's pretty good, nice feel. Mm. Things like a leather wrap steering wheel possibly here. Just a nice, I believe this one, yeah. Padding. This one, yeah. So I remember my mom had the 2015 Edge and that did not have the leather steering wheel. So this is an upgrade and we got the bigger screen whereas that one was like three and a half inch. This one I believe is a seven inch screen right there. Got a nice cubby holder right there. Auto dimming rear view mirror. This does not have Android Auto or CarPlay in this generation. But I believe in 2018 they got that. And there's no uh, emergency assist features such as emergency braking in this model year. You do get paddles though in your steering wheel on controls. Yes, that's true. And auto parking or electronic parking brake. Yeah, newer generations got the rotary dial shifter rather than the, the pull gate shifter. I do like this color combo here. It does give it good contrast. It is more unique. We do both have power adjusting seats front and lumbar but this one does passenger does not have lumbar yeah, full, um, this does have blind spot monitoring as well so i think it's an eight way with a lump power lumbar in this one yeah that one's high adjustable this one i think is it high adjustable yeah high adjustable on the passenger i love that feature you also get heated seats and this is an sel trim so i think the only thing that's missing is like cold seats Walls. Cool, I think the, the Bose auto on system and the sunroof. That's what the thing is always missing. Cup holder is pretty decent. I think the fin finish of this is pretty good. I have owned a 2015, not 20, yeah, 2015 Ford Fusion, and my mom owned the Edge. So, quality in this era is pretty good. A lot of soft touch materials, even up here, the padding, down here too. I do like the door handles, they're almost full hand size and they are electronic locking so when you do lock them for the kids safety mirror unlock, you just pull twice and it unlocks let's check out the rear <coughs> doors open hop in, it's good ingress and good egress in the Ford Edge here, we do have a vented rears, and you do have DC two prong outlet here. Is it three? Is it ground two? Yeah. It's a and then you got a cigarette lighter, 12 volt adapter. Uh, a lot of space here. Isn't it? So, with my seating position, you have about I'd say like six inches, a little bit more, and these seats do recline back the lever here so you can go back and forth plenty of space as you can see in this card that can fit a lot of drinks from like your starbucks your noodles and company full-size water bottles fit in here 
I love the armrests as they're actually at arm level height when you rest your arm. <clears throat> These seats are nicely padded here, nice and soft. Even though this is not real leather, I'd say this is pretty comfortable leather to be seated in. And as you can see, the cargo area is plenty big for a two row SUV. I'll go ahead and pop the trunk so you can see that. These are sitting on 18 inch wheels which gives it a little bit of a firm ride, which we'll go ahead and demonstrate that on the test drive here. So as you can see, we can fit about three, four backpacks far and about like, let's say three and a half wide. And there's this have a safety feature where it does, if it, someone closes it on you, it will open back up, but it does have the <coughs> automated lift gate. And on the driver's side, there is my Ford Touch with the locking pin system. All right, shall we go on a test drive? Let's go. Now as a passenger, you do have a lot of adjustability in terms of seating. So I can't actually sit high and sit over the hood. One thing to note when driving this, it's very obvious you'll see that the hood has some nice bulging to it gives it this nice sculpted look in my opinion this has one of the better looking interiors that looks a little sporty in terms of an suv as i stated previously the car is based off of the ford fusion which has similar driving characteristics this being the front wheel drive option should give it a little bit better turning radius and I believe, if I'm correct, the they share similar suspension with Volvo in terms when they designed the Ford Fusion or the Ford Mondeo in European markets. But I will point out from previous experience on these edges that they do have uh, very sensitive brakes, so you do have to readjust to learning how to brake on these brakes. Sensitive in a good way, but also bad too when you're trying to maneuver in tight spots or tricky situations. Okay, we, we don't need to demonstrate the braking capabilities. That's tight as a review, bro. <laughs> One thing to quickly know, that there is a lot of good sound insulation in this car. You don't hear much from the outside. As a car going about like 50, 60 miles an hour, you barely hear it. You got a nice thick <clears throat> windshield got pretty decent visibility the hood is a little bit longer but as long as you have the seat a little bit higher up you can see over the hood so getting into drive throughs and parking spots is pretty easy and with this 3.5 liter v6 it does it is shared with a lot of the other Ford products such as the Explorer the Interceptor Taurus it's also sharing a similar block to my Mustang, which is the 3.7 liter. A very similar engine, so it does have a good amount of power to it. I believe about 285 horsepower and about right under 260 pound-feet of torque. I think this gets about 19 city, 26 highway, and a combined fuel economy rating of 21. And let's see, based on this <clears throat> this driver, let, what is his fuel economy? I think we're averaging 21.9. I believe that's mostly highway too. So he is hitting the EPA estimates. Um, as you can see here. This is like somewhere like a, a medium sized tank, by the way. It's not a big tank in here. Like this is what, 18 gallons, 16 gallons? I think not in the 18, maybe like 16 gallons. Not that big. I think max range when you fill it up is about maybe 300 some miles. No, that's not a lot actually. I think it's 330 if I remember right from my mom's 2015, which I know they didn't change much until like 2019, I believe. I don't know if you guys can see on this road here, there's a lot of uneven surfaces. The suspension is definitely firm. I would say it gives you that nice sporty feel to it in terms of the mid-sized SUVs 
and the <coughs> the HVAC system and these are from my experience have been really good they are quick to cool and quick to heat in a I guess very efficient use of the venting you have really good adjustable vents really big vents here too very easy laid out manual controls but you can just still adjust a lot of this through here as well with this sink 3 upgrade I think I'm not sure if this is like 3.5 but it does seem a little smoother on here and it does have plenty of pickup power we do have a decent amount of braking power in this car it does get you to a stop pretty quickly and very uh, safely any comments you want to add to this has a, a nice sound to the engine honestly though it's not horrible it's not like not the amazing but it sounds decent honestly nice V6 sound yeah I agree it's, it sounds uncharacteristic uh, of this uh, exterior you know it has this nice striking bold exterior that doesn't uh, seem to uh, offend anyone but it, then it gives you this nice deep growl to it Also, definitely somewhat peppy about the V6. Yeah, you put your, you, you put your foot down to the floor, it's not gonna like take off, you know, but you get enough power. Yeah, what do you think of the handling of this? Handling's not bad, you know, it's, it's not not amazing the curve, but it's just enough on the curves, you know, it's not a sports car, you know, not a sport oriented SUV, you know, it's not gonna have those curves like, like that all that much though, but it's just enough to take you by. Yeah, I feel like and these so, bolsters are pretty decently sized. Uh, like four like this, you know, you can still kind of control the car well enough. Yeah, you do feel a little bit of body roll. It's not uh, terrible, like in my Forerunner. Yeah, I don't think the robot ain't tipping over in here though, you know. Yeah. I do. I did forget to mention push button start. This. Uh, this model the SEL does have remote start with climate control. It does have the automated lift gate so you can open it with the key fob. I don't believe this has the option for cooled seats. I think that was the only option it didn't have in all wheel drive and I think the the kick to open the tailgate. Unless and, and does it have that? I yeah, don't remember that, but it the so, sunroof though. And the sunroof option, which I think without the sunroof you get a little bit more headroom. I am 5'9 and I have right under 6 inches of headroom, so there's plenty of headroom, knee room. Armrests are good sized well, and uh, <clears throat> you're not bumping elbows in the center console as well. Yeah, it's a nice space here. Nice I think that's uh, console as well. I think one of the the downfalls of this particular uh, these model years, I think up until 2019, is that the I think even on this option uh, the headlights are on because I from what I remember the uh, base model the headlights were not that great. They had enough uh, brightness off to like it's spread out, but it's not like direct directly in front of you. Yeah, I think this has about the same thing. Uh, but this one does have the LED fog lights, although they look more like daytime running lights though. I feel like they don't really add much to the lighting output when it comes to actual driving. But I must say like being a passenger in the corners is not too bad in this vehicle if you have to take really sharp turns. It's quite balanced, is well composed. We got a nice little chime to let us know that we are low on fuel and we should probably fuel up. Yeah. This does have the hands-free unlock with the key fob, which I think he has it on him. That's yours on all four doors too, by the way. 
Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Well, most cars only are the front two. Yeah, I was very surprised. I'm like, wow, okay, some luxury features here. Here you guys go. We have a nice scenic view for you of the lake there. Not too hot in the stocks. Decent sounds. Oh yeah, the sound system I think stock. This doesn't have the Bose option, but it does sound pretty good. We can go ahead and play a quick clip of that. Yeah, it sounds really clear. That then doesn't sound like under uh, under volume. It sounds full. Does not have emergency braking. We'll do a quick right. acceleration test here, whenever you're ready. All right, all right. let's go for y'all. Nice bet. I don't know if you guys can see, but this is the output that you get from the headlights, which is not very safe, you know. It, it, does, it does the job. But you can see, you can only see in the middle. You cannot see off to the sides. All right, so I guess we'll conclude this review. What do you think? What would you rate this on performance in this category? Like a seven. It's not underwhelming. Not not um. Not, just right. Not amazing. It's just, just enough, you know. All right, some I good agree. Braking power, some good acceleration. It sound, has a nice sound to it, you know. But remember, they do have a faster model of this too. It's ST? Oh, actually, oh, this, and this generation is a sport, so it has a little bit more pep to it. Yeah. So if, if you're looking for more power, they have that option. However, I would recommend the 2 liter EcoBoost turbocharged motor instead. That what has more, gen? yes, in 2015. It actually has a, more torque and it's hit way lower. I think at 1800 RPMs, if I'm right, max torque. So you do get a little bit more pep into it, especially in the city, you know. You get less of that. I guess lag. In terms of fuel economy, this isn't the greatest, particularly this specific engine. I feel like you should skip this one either. If you go for performance, you should go to the the next one up, which is the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, which is found in the Sport or the next gen ST. Or if you want fuel economy, you get the turbocharged one, which I can attest it does actually get pretty decent fuel economy. In terms of technology, I think this is for at this time, this model year, it has a decent amount of tech. Like CarPlay and Android Auto was just coming out, so it was mostly reserved for the luxury brands there. But I think it was Sync. I think Sync had like one of the most features in terms of Bluetooth syncing. Off your phone, you can play music off your phones. It had built-in nav. I think it was one of the most user-friendly. As you can see, the buttons are very easy to read and manage. Responsiveness is pretty good. I know the early iterations of Sync were a little bit bad, especially at the beginning of Sync 3, so it wasn't the greatest. But I think uh, overall, it's a very fluid system. And I think with the gauges, they did add a nice, I guess, style to them in terms of technology. So. You yeah, do. One good thing is you can actually see the uh, your music in the engine cluster. I was actually one page for it. Yeah. You can see where you're playing and all that. You get your nav too. I guess where you turn by turn directions. If I don't you, think you, you use, can get that in there. I think you can get into your built-in nav if you use this, the built-in nav. Oh yeah. This doesn't also have Series XM too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, actually no, you can't get navigation here a lot. Yeah. Well, it, I think it's a compass. Yeah. You get all that. Yeah. And you can also see your I think phone. You can do. Your phone call, yeah. you can see example, we see a tire pressure over there all on the fly with these, I guess, multimedia controls here. Yeah, you can see uh, the tire pressure for each tire. We have the full tire pressure system in here. Yeah. So uh, in terms of comfort, I would say this is a very comfortable SUV. It's very stylish. You can see over everything, not many blind spots because you do have blind spot monitoring. You have giant windows front and rear. Competitors at this time were, I think, the Venza, the non-hybrid one at that time. I think 
that that was their direct competitor. I don't think there was any other SUVs. There are two two row that are the same size. A Rav4 probably. Rav4 smaller. So I mean, yeah, I think comfort wise, you would would you agree? Yeah. You can't be on comfort. Safety, I think it does. You do have side airbags. No, I think not on this gen, but the next gen. Overall, would you recommend this vehicle? Yeah, without a doubt. Definitely nice size. Five people. Nice size trunk. You can get a good amount of luggage in there or baggage and groceries yeah. that we need to get in there. Yeah. Definitely nice in that. Yeah, I would agree. Strongly recommend this if you're looking for something that gives you a lot of space in terms of cargo and people space. If you're trying to carry people, if you don't want like a third row, you just need to go to Costco or Sam's Club load up on groceries this car will do for you and those seats do fold flat i think 60 40 so you can get a lot of storage back there and it isn't as curved in the back as some other suvs it's more squarish in the middle all the way up to the back so you can fit a lot of things in there so this car i think looks pretty good so if you want something that has this nice uh, i call it the catfish look in the front it has nice muscular lines. You'll see, I'll point it out from earlier in the video, you'll see on the side it has nice strong lines on the body. I think overall it's a good looking vehicle. You know, good looking SUV. It's pretty reliable. And they do a good job with the, the interior lighting as well. It's very modern. It is LED. Yeah. That is LED. Oh, like that. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment if you have any questions or suggestions on what you would like to see. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.